Let's talk about building trust. They say that two foundations of trust are transparency and effective communication. I would say that's not only true in our everyday lives, but also true within our engineering careers as well. I would also contend that one of the places where trustworthiness is the most important is in the arena of industrial design. But how are we going to build trust into industrial automated control systems? By protecting our data from malware and unauthorized or untrusted hardware. And in order to do that, we're going to need some help. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Christophe Tremlett from Analog Devices and I explore how we can build trusted industrial automated control systems with the Max-Q 1065 Ultra Low Power Cryptographic Controller with Chip DNA for Embedded Devices. We investigate how this solution utilizes physical unclonable function encrypted memory, secure key storage, and asymmetric crypto public key deployment to provide a great solution for industrial automated control systems. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Analog Devices. Hi, Christophe. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Amelia. I'm happy to participate to this chat talk with you today. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about how we can build trusted automated control systems today. But before we dig into the solutions in this arena, Christophe, there is a growing need for security for these types of systems, right? Absolutely. What we are seeing today in the industry we are moving to industry 4.0, so that means that connectivity is getting more advanced. There is more digitalization as well, and all of this increases the attack surface. On the other hand, we are seeing hackers getting more and more sophisticated, being able to build really harmful attacks. And also, we have upcoming new regulations such as AEC 62443, which is the security standard for industrial automated control system, and also European Union Cyber Resilience Act. Okay, so we've talked about process control communication a couple times here on Chalk Talk, but there has been quite a bit of evolution in this space over the years, right? Yeah. In the past, people would use traditional communication media, such as the 420 milliamps current loot and heart protocols. And the industry today is moving to more advanced connectivity media, such as Ethernet APL or 10 base T1L, which is a single pair Ethernet. So that opens more possibilities and more flexibility in the communication. Okay. So... Christoph, there are different levels of security here as well, right? IEC 62443 considers four security levels. At the bottom, we have the level one, which is related to accidental or non-intentional violations. And by definition, in this case, the resources and motivation of the hackers are, are low. And it goes up to level four, which is a level corresponding to intentional violations by government or nationwide organizations, which have virtually unlimited amount of resources, and also they can hire highly skilled people. And in between, we have level two and three related to intentional violations, but with a different level of resources, motivation, and skills. So what are you seeing as the most common threats for industrial automation control systems? Well, first of all, we are seeing malware. And some people that are listening to this chat talk may have heard about Stuxnet. So Stuxnet was a very famous, unfortunately, virus. And the threats regarding malware, such as viruses or worms, is still very present. And of course, it can get to very, very harmful situations. We are also seeing as other threats, 
the sensitive data disclosure, such as parameters related to an industrial recipe. And in general, the stakeholders want to keep this sensitive data protected as uh, they consist in valuable assets. Also, we can see altered measurements, like when you have a sensor, the measurement made by the sensor might be altered on its way. We are also seeing the usage of unauthorized counterfeit hardware. Okay, so Christoph, how do we protect these systems from malware? The best way to protect against malware is to use digital signature. In general, digital signatures consist in putting like a wax seal on your software, but in the digital world. So by using digital signature, you can make sure that the software comes from a trusted source and also that it has not been modified to include malware. And the best way to do this is to sign the firmware with a private key. And that in general happens in the R&D facility so that the private key, which is a most sensitive asset, can be easily protected. And then when the firmware is deployed in the field devices before being executed, its signature is verified using the matching public key. This way, we can guarantee firmware authenticity and integrity. Also, the European Cyber Resilience Act calls for secure firmware updates so that when a flaw is discovered in an industrial automated control system, the manufacturer can provide a firmware update to compensate for the security flow. So the process that we use to enable Secure Boot to guarantee firmware authenticity and integrity can also be used for secure firmware updates. Then when it comes to protect the measurement data, we can also use digital signature. What we do is that we append the digital signature to the measurement using an algorithm such as ECDSA or RSA. Therefore, in the same way that the firmware was verified using a public key, the measurement authenticity and integrity can be further verified as well. Also, when it comes to protection against sensitive data disclosure, as we mentioned, that would apply to industrial recipe parameters, then we can use encryption to prevent unauthorized disclosure. Typically, we would use AES encryption. When it comes to combined encryption and digital signature to enable confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity, we can use protocols like TLS, which stands for Transport Layer Security. All right. So talk to me a bit more about how the MaxQ 1065 solution helps secure embedded connected devices. So the MaxQ 1065 is a secure authenticator, or some people call it a secure element. So it is essentially an IC that is meant to be connected to a host microcontroller. And what it does is that it can compute or verify digital signatures and as well compute encryption or decryption. Typically, it supports AES 128 bits or 256 bits for encryption and SHA-256 for ECDSA mutual authentication or data digital signature, as well as secure boot and secure updates. The MaxQ 1065 securely stores keys. It also stores and manages certificates. It has a file system with custom security attributes, and it can enable X509 certificate storage and management. Last, to bring the highest level of protection, for keys and certificate, it features a chip DNA physical and clonable function that fully encrypts the memory content so that even using invasive techniques, a hacker cannot easily retrieve the keys or sensitive data that is stored in the MaxQ 1065. So, Christoph, I've heard a lot about asymmetric crypto lately, and that plays a part here as well, right? 
Absolutely. Asymmetric cryptography is a preferred and recommended way to enable security in an industrial automated control system. And typically, IEC 62443 and OPC UA do recommend asymmetric cryptography and more specifically public key infrastructures. In such a public key infrastructure, each node holds a unique private public key pair. And to bring an additional level, an additional level of trust in the public key, a certification authority establishes certificate so that the public key can be fully trusted. So public key infrastructure enables authenticity, confidentiality, and integrity of communication, including TLS. It also indirectly allows secure boot and secure firmware updates, as well as device authentication to avoid the usage of cloned, fake, or untrusted hardware. So to enable an easier deployment of a public key infrastructure, we can use a MaxQ 1065, which for each device will hold a private public key pair. It will also hold one or several certificates to further enable the different security functions, such as a secure boot or data signature or secure firmware updates. Fantastic. Well, Christophe, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. You're very welcome, Amelia. It was a, a pleasure to have this chat talk with you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from analog devices. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.